chasing a mad bastard in a red scimitar. Hello and welcome to the junkyard. In this episode, I take a truly terrible Reliance Scimitar from the early 70s and attempt to fix it up and put it back on the road in just 24 hours. But why, you ask, would anybody take on a job like this on such a crazy schedule the day before New Year's Eve during a bitterly cold December and drive it 150 miles home? Well, I did it because I needed a car for work but I had a really tiny budget of literally just a couple of hundred pounds. All I could actually afford was a nasty old bag of something really uninspiring. But looking online, I found this absolute beauty. The 1973 Alliance with the GTE with 3 litre V6, fabulous styling by Opal Design and a top speed of 120 miles an hour. The main problem was that this car had been off the road for decades and it was a complete shed. The other big problem was that I had no off-road parking at all. So this car had to be made respectable, road legal and usable straight away. But if you want a powerful 1970s sports GT for the price of a clapped out box on Astra, you need to be willing to think outside the box. So with the offer of some workshop space from good friend and collaborator Henry, a spare gallon of paint for another job, I thought, what could possibly go wrong? Right, well we're just off to go and get this old Reliance Scimitar, 1974, hasn't been on the road for a long time, looks absolutely atrocious, but we think we can see through and there's a diamond in the rough, so we think we know better, we're going to do a 24 hour restoration and it's going to be blooming fantastic. So where is it you've seen it, haven't you? Yep. Why is it just around this corner. Was just there, but, uh, maybe it's over there. So here we are, here's the new machine. <laughs> it's the first time I've actually seen the car and the true horror of what I've just bought myself becomes apparent. We can't start the engine because all the cooling hoses have rotted, so there's no option but to tow the car some 12 miles back to the workshop. Oh, the, the anti-roll bar brackets, but... Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a foggy day! I can't see nothing! I'm towing behind him, car. I'm about eight feet behind him! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> the things you do! The things you do! Oh, I'm gonna stop filming now. Well, this is better. We seem to have got into our groove. The brakes are working pretty well. Yeah, we're enjoying it. Shame the old 8-track stereo is not working. <laughs> it certainly keeps you on the edge of your toes. Towing is kind of a lot of fun, but at the same time, one of the most unpleasant things you can actually do. Nearly there. Just make sure I don't slam in the back of him on the last corner. Oh, I should stop filming. Here we are in Henry's garage, and um, we just bought this um, fantastic machine. Uh, 37 years old, and been off the road for however many years. And we've just discovered that the lights don't work, and there's water coming out the radiator hose, and there's something a bit funny going on with the brake pedal. And somehow or other, we've got to get it road legal, and then drive it about 150 miles home. Tomorrow, so um, it's absolutely obvious what our main priority to be getting on with is first of all, and that is the bodywork. <laughs> so that's what we're doing now. Didn't see what that was. That was the spray gun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the spray gun hitting the. Day. It's going to be some good finish. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get when you film and do body repairs at the same time. <laughs> There's Tom, some unsavoury greasing. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Oops, need a bit more of the old lubricant on the rubber gloves. Check out the gloves, yeah. <laughs> Funny you went straight to that job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<coughs> oh bugger, I must get the um, I need a clip on that. Well, the car is now more or less rubbed down. Uh, many of the bonnet to go. Bonnet's interestingly flaky. <laughs> but not bad for a 20 minute respray. No. And especially if we can get it to actually work without water pouring out of it as well. That Remember Earl Sheeb's Earl? similar kind of paint job? The drive in, drive out, drive through paint jobs? No? Yeah. Where was that? Um, it's an American company, they had, they had various shops. What, literally, just drive in, get a paint well, job? They drive in, rub it down like what I've just done, mask it up and spray it, and no. not a lot of money, and drive back out. Fantastic. That bought from criminals and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Bastard. There's always a risk, isn't there, when you're doing this kind of thing, breaking something else that wasn't actually broken before. That's the hard thing, isn't it? Like the whole car. Ow. Does that look like the right diameter? This, um, I think it is. Yes, yeah, just. Yeah. Oh, that's the. Oh, that's that the original. was the original anyway, so that yeah. should be fine. It's just a bit tricky, and that's on there. So it all looks tiggity boo. So that should be absolutely perfect. Yeah. We've got a bit of rag. There is a bit of rag. Whip that up. And then once I got that other little lick done, then it'd be nice to actually run it up and see what happens to it. See if it actually works. So uh, almost masked. So we're nearly ready to respray. Give or take a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't got a week. We've got about three quarters of an hour. Usually. What? Yeah. Edges first, but then. So what time do you reckon it is, Emmy? It's uh, quarter to twelve. Quarter to twelve, day one. And uh, that we didn't even start, did we, till god nine o'clock. And that's quarter to twelve at nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, well, what, do you reckon, how long do you reckon we've spent on the car so far? Three hours? Uh, in it total? Two, it was two hours just then. Yeah. So, uh, I'd say maybe four or five, actually. Yeah. Time. But it don't look bad from ten feet, does it? That's not bad. In fact, in places, it could actually look okay. Not many places, but... <laughs> Not many places, yeah. <laughs> so, although it's as rough as a badger's arse, <laughs> and feels like the crater of the moon, the moon. It's, it's a map of the moon in Braille. Um, it's all stuck down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not flaky then. <laughs> not selling it very well. <laughs> Well, well, we've uh, painted the beast in the night and come down and looked at what we've done. I have to say it's not too bad. <laughs> so now is uh, give it the uh, the uh, preparation of the undercoat before we start putting the top coat on. So um, here we go for the uh, preparation. We've uh, dusted it off with the old cloth and um, there's a little nasty bit there. And um, 
I think that's uh, that, so that's the preparation <laughs> uh, on with the taco. Yeah. So after about 15 minutes preparation, we're going to crack on with the top coat. <laughs> Here we go. Let's hope it's a nice colour. <laughs> Well, that's it. That's uh, as much coat as we're going to get on uh, today. Um, it's bloody cold. Uh, the paint's not going to go off. If I put any more on, it's going to all turn to jelly. I've run out of thinners. I've got about a teacup full of paint left. And so that's as good as it's going to get, I have to say. In places, <laughs> it actually looks, dare I say it, quite good. There's a few bits I'm going to have to go back over to do some localised bits and pieces but it certainly passes the looks good from 20 feet test so coat one that's, it, that's the first coat of paint well it does look better than it did yesterday I have to say I mean like really not messing around it looks better the bit of striping is still quite thin but that's just one coat and that's December <laughs> not the ideal conditions really oh very nice it beats washing the car doesn't it <laughs> I got that. did that once every three years, that'd be quite good. Yeah. <laughs> Time efficiency saving. A bit of sanding down. Oh, who That's said anything that. about sand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sanding down, is that, were we supposed to do that? Yeah. I mean, my sight's gone terrible, I don't know. But from here, to the glass showing, I think it's not looking too bad. How many hours, Greg? Start to finish, from rolling it in, looking how it did to how it looks now um, no more than what, six hours six to eight hours I'd say yeah I think we've done good there actually mm. that is quite a transformation started okay for the first 40 miles or so it drove really well and it was absolutely great to have a thing out on the open road but then the temperature gauge went right off the scale and the radiator exploded so violently that they thought the car was on fire and we had to finish the journey on the back of a recovery truck remember this is new year's eve so if i don't get home before midnight i'm in a lot of trouble but I did make it home, and after some tempo repairs, I got the car to the MOT station. And it almost passed its MOT. It only failed on one thing, the rear brakes were binding on. Well, it's now halfway through January. Um, I thought we'd get this car dragged off the garage, painted, sorted out, back on the road in about 24 hours. Um, you can see it's looking a bit better than it was. But it's been quite, um, well, as you'd expect with old cars. Um, we got halfway home, the radiator exploded, the engine overheated, the brakes were binding on, probably contributed to the overheat, and uh, got dragged home on an AA transporter. Since then, I think the head gasket now needs doing, but the last thing it needs for the MOT is these damn rear brakes, which kept binding on, and a hell of a job get to the bottom of the problem and I think I've solved it. I think it's simply that the springs were tired so 
the shoes weren't coming off so the brakes were dragging which probably caused the overheating I'm nearly there, I'm just about to test that hopefully if the brakes work she's got an MOT, she's road legal for a year and then all I've got to do then is sort the radiator out and do the head gasket and then I'm on the road in my 1970s GT Blimey, well, uh, we finished, I, I don't know what the time is, it's middle of the night, it's 10 to midnight, it wasn't the spring after all, it was, would you believe it, it's this bloody tube, the tube has perished and it's collapsed inside and the hydraulic pressure was forcing down the tube, putting the brakes on, but it couldn't escape, so this thing was basically meaning that the back brakes were getting on tighter and tighter and tighter every time you hit the brake. No wonder it overheated on the way home. I mean, hell, <laughs> it should be pretty fast without the brakes on. So, um, that's it. We're finally ready, and um, I think we're ready for the MOT. So, uh, not quite 24 hours, but let's hope we get it fixed within January. <laughs> Well, you can probably see I've got the engine in pieces. Um, well, the good news is it's past its MOT. So we're now completely legal and it's still January. So we didn't get it fixed in 24 hours like we thought we would. But we're, you know, on the road within the month. The only thing we may need to do now is the head gasket, which I'm just doing now. Whip the heads off. Hopefully it shouldn't be too complicated. And then we should be on the road. Seven o'clock in the morning. There's still frost on the cars. Just taken one of the cylinder heads out. Only milkman and bloody nutcases are up. Other time. I don't do it now. It won't get done. And, uh, the only justification for this car is that it's a car and it gets me to work. So I gotta crack on and get it done. Well, I think there's my culprit. It's pretty subtle, I think you'll agree, but um, if you look closely there, number one, we've got a tiny bit of deposit around that plug adjacent to this water port here, and all the others are black and sooty here, ever so slightly grey. And then if we look inside, not only have we got some water already in number one, obviously that could have could have just poured in when when I took the head off, but I don't think so because it, the others are completely dry, dry as a bone. But also that the real clincher is the rust. As you can see here, we've actually got some rust adjacent to that waterway, and I don't know if you can just see. There's actually a trickle under the water on the side of the bore, so obviously that's been um, venting in. I think that's 
where the gasket has blown and actually I can see the line of rust is under the gasket itself so it's adjacent to the block not adjacent to the head so I think that's um, that's the culprit next thing is obviously fixing it which is a another matter entirely well it's um, it's about quarter past six in the morning and it's the 5th of February so just over a month since we picked this car up I've got to admit I'm getting a bit um, a bit ground down by it it's been quite quite a tough job it has been harder than I expected uh, it's MOT'd it's taxed and everything works and we've made some massive uh, cosmetic improvements there is a fantastic looking machine and all in all you know it's definitely cost an awful lot of money but um, there's a problem with the engine uh, I've just I'm just finishing doing the head gasket now fingers crossed that will work um, if there continues to be a problem well I, I don't know what I'm going to do but um, I think it's probably going to be fine I just have to sell this bit um, but you know, I think given the condition the car was in in December, it really wouldn't make it sick that it had been used for oh God knows how many years. Um, it was a long way from the road. I think you know, in abstract terms, I think it's quite a quick turnaround, and with any luck, it will actually be driving by the end of today. Um, my difficulty is I don't really have any time to throw at this, and I certainly don't have any money. This is it. After just on the head gasket, ah, moment of truth. Let's see if it starts, and then see if we fix the problem. this is it, I think it's just about finished now. Um, head gasket's done. Um, when I first did it I was a bit worried because um, there was still a little bit of bubbles in the water but um, after running it for a few minutes letting it settle it's now crystal clear blue so fingers crossed that's absolutely resolved and, and that must have just been you know some of what was left from the kind of oily cappuccino that was in the um, in the water before. It's been quite a lot of work, I have to say, but we're still only about one month after we picked up what was a completely dead car. It's had six hours of um, garage time, and everything else has been done out in the street during January. So I think quite a dramatic transformation, and um, you know, it's a fantastic-looking machine. But I'm um, just going for a bit of a spin, see how we're doing. Just double check, I've been taking out a few shorter shorter trips. I've talked down the head second time, so now it's about seeing how we get on. So, I mean it really is feeling better than it ever has done because the brakes are basically okay. There is still a bit of a problem, they seem to be binding on momentarily, they're not coming off straight away, so I'm not quite sure what that is, whether that is another hose that we've been facing or some other issue somewhere in the system. Or it might even cure itself with a little bit of use. But, um, 
you know. outside in January and fitting it all around a working week and all in for around £600. So maybe it's not going to win any prizes but for the price of a fairly unpleasant old hatchback I've got what I think is a pretty spectacular machine and one that's really rewarding to drive. And you know if it wasn't for that single rotted £12 brake hose then the brakes wouldn't have seized on, the engine wouldn't have overheated, the radiator would not have burst, the head gasket wouldn't have blown and it would have passed its MOT first time. So not such a mad bastard after all. Hey man, we picked up a tail. Yeah, you went through the bloody light here. What shall I do? Just pull over and cock your lip. But what about that thing? It's all right, I'll use it if I have Cover it up. Oh, right, I still got a long, long way to go. Red light, I know, officer. I'm You're sorry, did you? I'm very sorry. It was a bit of a misjudgment on my part. Um, I'm afraid I don't have my license with me. Uh, will you open it? Uh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll get the key. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, sorry, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> Thank you. 